It was saying goodbye to the old and welcoming in the new at Coronation Public School. On Wednesday, the official sod turning ceremony for the new French Immersion School marked the start of a new era of education in Timmins. Did you know that each and every day, 200 Canadians are injured and another four are killed as a result of impaired driving? That number may shock you, but here's another fact. Impaired driving is also Canada's number one criminal cause of death. Mad Canada wants to put a stop to this trend and their annual Strides of Change event is one way they get the message out. This is the third annual big event and organizers say it gets bigger and better every year. There's over 400 vendors both inside and outside the McIntyre and approximately 300 pieces of equipment. Zoe's foster parents in conjunction with MedGlobe are running a first aid and CPR certification course here at the YMCA this weekend. The cost to take the course is $100 and all proceeds will be going directly to Zoe's surgery fund. You will be issued a tax receipt for your donation and lunch for participants will be provided. By learning to save a life, you could help save Zoe's eyes. The shelter will be open for women to come to as of March 15th, but on April 22nd there will be a formal grand opening with an open house that the public is welcome to attend. Some ideas to increase the number of visitors to that area were included in the presentation, such as creating a school for the performing arts or using the Shania Twain Centre as a community events centre. One idea, however, caused quite the kerfuffle at the council meeting, the idea of taking the skating oval away from Gillies Lake and moving it to the Goldmine Tour site. Extrata says the focus is to integrate the remaining assets of the Kid Met site into the assets at the Horn Smelter in order to increase the financial competitiveness of the Copper Canada division in the global market. But Extrata stresses that no new jobs will be added at the Quebec Smelter despite the added processing workload. Lauren Such, Eastlink News. This project will not only create short-term construction jobs, but when all is said and done, 50 new long-term permanent jobs will also be created. Lauren Such, Eastlink News. The old station was powered down on Monday and construction on its replacement is well underway. If all goes as planned, it should be up and running by December 17th of this year. Lauren Such, Eastlink News. It may have felt like minus 35 degrees outside on January 1st, but that didn't stop huge crowds of people from coming out to Hollinger Park to celebrate. I'm here with Snooze the Moose. He's seven years old and he's been here since he was born. Through a little bit of legwork, we've discovered that these signs can be printed right here in Timmins. In fact, computerized lettering and signs says they can print 120 signs like this at $3 a piece. Wednesday was the 15th annual National Take Our Kids to Work Day. For most students, this means going to the office with mom or dad. But for 6th grade 9 students who spent the day here at the Ministry of Natural Resources with their parents, they got to do something a little different than usual. Over 100 people took to the streets of Timmins this morning in a march to raise awareness about suicide in Aboriginal communities. Logren says the city's plan is to continue scraping paint chips like these ones off the rafters until the new humidifier arrives and city officials will monitor the situation throughout the winter. In the spring, city workers are going to come in and be repainting and sanding down these rafters in order to fix the situation before the 2010 season. Lauren Such, Eastlink News. Ontario announced that food and beverages under $4 and print newspapers will no longer be subject to the provincial portion of the harmonized sales tax, which is slated to come into effect July 1, 2010. This announcement comes after months of pressure on the provincial government by the public and the NDP party to stop the sales tax. But is it enough? Timmins James Bay MPP Gilles Bisson doesn't seem to think so. Today's Remembrance Day ceremony at the Legion in South Porcupine was attended by approximately 350 Roland Mishner Secondary School students, as well as many community members and elementary school students. Lauren Such, Eastlink News. C is for Castle Frank and of course Canoe and also Clouds and Moose Crossing LaRue. And C is also for Canadian artist Charles Patchter. This verse can be found in his new book M is for Moose which will hit bookshelves on October 24th. The book showcases Patchter's signature images of favourite Canadian icons alongside witty rhymes. Some Canadian icons found in the book are Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Margaret Atwood, Butter Tarts and of course the Moose. Patchter receives the Order of Canada in 2000 for his work in the visual arts. 
It's been 24 hours since the initial terrorist attacks occurred in Mumbai. Bands of gunmen armed with assault rifles, hand grenades and explosives invaded at least nine sites in the city yesterday. Attackers stormed into the Taj Hotel just before 10 p.m. local time and opened fire. The targets include the Oberai Hotel, Cafe Leopold, a train station, a movie theater, a Jewish center and police headquarters. The attacks all took place in Mumbai's business and entertainment district. It's said the attacks are aimed at Westerners. In most regions in Ontario, both the temperature and precipitation amounts should be normal this winter. This means we can expect an average of around 32 centimeters of snowfall per month and temperatures below freezing. So what does this mean for your winter activities? Well, thanks to artificial snow, Ontario favorites Horseshoe Valley and Blue Mountain are already open for the season.